Hello Watch Enthusiasts! Now today I have another one of these videos where I talk about recent releases. And in this video I'd like to talk about some interesting things in the watch world prior to Baselworld this year. Now I will be at Baselworld for the first two or three days. Sadly I can't stay for longer due to, uh, to various family commitments. But, uh, but hopefully uh, I'll be able to see various uh, interesting things and I will photograph the show if, I, if I'm um, uh, unable to film it. Um, now, that does mean that I'm, my, my responses uh, during uh, the Baselworld period might be a little bit limited on the channel, um, but please do bear with me. Now, as per usual, I'm starting this video with a new Oris, and Oris have released a few watches recently, uh, notably the, the, the new Aquis, um, which will be uh, available for purchase quite soon, I imagine after Baselworld. But they've released a second watch in the Aquis lineup, the Hammerhead, which I would like to talk about. So this watch is a limited edition of 2,000 pieces, and at $2,500 it really does punch the Aquis lineup into a higher price point. And I suspect this watch will sell quite well, because being a limited edition it, um, it, it certainly will be quite rare. Now this is a 500 meter diver, so it does bring up the, the, water, uh, the depth rating of the original Aquis as well, uh, from the 300 to 500. And uh, this, this watch is designed to draw attention to, um, uh, to a new fund which should be started by Oris after the selling of all these watches uh, to, to promote the, um, the conservation of the hammerhead, uh, the hammerhead shark, that is. And, uh, and, and various scientists have, uh, have said that the, these, these are one of those species that are going to go extinct if we don't act soon. So on that basis, I appreciate the initiative that Oris have, um, have, have used here. To, to, to promote the, the, the wildlife conservation that I think is necessary. Now the finishing of this watch is, as with all uh, Oris, is exemplary and, and really quite fantastic. The dial has several levels, it has that beautiful sunbursted uh, finish in the centre, uh, in that, uh, that grey colour. It then has that lowered segment around the edge with the, the second or minute track, uh, which I, I find particularly attractive and does draw the eye to the centre of the dial. The case has been enlarged to 45.5mm, uh, taking it uh, well above the 43mm of the standard watch. And, uh, and I do think that uh, that is suitable, really, for the fact that this watch is meant to be a professional diver's watch. Now, of course, it follows the, the same case redesigns as the, the new Aquis, notably the, the less jagged crown guards and the, the slightly more subtle lugs. Um, but it also does include those, those new proprietary screws, which I, I talked about in the previous video, so I shan't go on about at length. But, uh, but I really wasn't pleased to see these again, because to be honest, I, I think that the Aquis was already difficult enough to, to change the strap on, so it would have been nice to see the normal screws still there, because uh, very few people have triangular screwdrivers like this, um, with these, um, these triple-winged screwdrivers, um, which, we, which I think is, is aggravating that one has to go out and buy a screwdriver to change the bracelet to a strap. So I would have appreciated that uh, if that were to remain the, 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 in the original uh, form of a simple flathead screwdriver. Now I'm still not sure about the hands of this watch, because I, I, I loved the, the flowing aesthetics and the, the sheer beauty of the original, but, uh, but I appreciate this is in the design cues of the watch, and I understand that, um, uh, that, that it's, it's a, a redesign really, and, uh, and really it's, it's just a matter of taste. Though I do believe these hands contain more loom than previous ones, making them more legible at night, which really is a plus. One aspect that I really do like about this watch though, is the inclusion of the blue second hand. I think this really does lift the design of the watch, and uh, and I think complements that that uh, that polished ceramic bezel very nicely, um, to give that that gleam of sunlight with that that uh, that smack of blue, if you will, which uh, which I I do think is is a very very clever aesthetic uh, design and uh, and choice for Oris. The only thing I don't like really about this watch um, is the the placement of the day date indicator, uh, courtesy of the Sleater SW220 in this watch. And I, I personally don't like the fact that the date has been put at 9 o'clock, uh, sorry, sorry, 3 o'clock, on the basis that I, I, I always liked the fact that the, the previous Oris dive watches had the, da the, the date or, um, uh, or, or, or indeed any sort of wheel at 6 o'clock, making for a more symmetrical design. So I would have liked to see those stacked at 6 o'clock rather than, uh, than placed at the, the 3 o'clock. But then that is a, a very minor sort of, uh, sort of niggle. One thing that I have to give this watch is the fact that it does have a wonderfully designed case back with a, a, an embossed um, design uh, with a, a hammerhead shark, which I think really does um, serve to illustrate what this watch is fighting for in terms of uh, donating to charity. So I certainly respect Oris for this. Now with the same movement, the Sleater SW220, 
Oris have also released a new model in the the Big Crown line, and this is a uh, a special edition uh, for the the, the Royal uh, Flying Doctor Service of Australia, and this is a, an aeronautic um, a medical service, and uh, and does perform a a, a very impressive uh, job of of helping the 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 injured, um, and uh, and of course operating. Um, via the, the air to, to get to, to patients and uh, people in, uh, in harm's way quickly. And this watch has been made in, in really in honour of them and, uh, and has been designed as a pilot's watch with a very legible dial with these clear markings around the dial um, with the, the, the dial um, in four quadrants, if you will, uh, numbered and, uh, and very, very well loomed. Of course, this does follow very traditional pilot's watch cues but I certainly think it has been um, modified very aptly to this service by adding a pulsometer around the edge of the dial um, to allow one to take someone's pulse. The case design of this watch is primarily brushed, but there are some polished bevels and a polished case back with the emblem of the service. And of course this watch has the day-date indicator for added practicality. The hands are these beautifully polished sword-style hands, which again follow those very classical cues of a pilot's watch. The most interesting aspect of this watch, though, in my opinion, is that chapter ring, which is rotated by that bezel, by that, uh, that beautifully finished, um, a very classic pilot-style bezel. And uh, it's bi-directional, so you can rotate that, uh, that chapter ring uh, under the dial, because it's geared through, the, um, uh, through that, uh, that, that bezel. So you can use it as both a second time zone indicator and a pulsometer when you need it. Though this piece of technology limits the watch to being only water-resistant to three atmospheres, or 30 metres, I do think it's worthwhile and certainly does suit this watch perfectly. Now the price of the watch varies between the um, uh, the price of $1,900 for one of the leather straps, um, the alligator or the, the leather, and $2,100 for the metal bracelet. Now one other notable um, event, I suppose, in the watch world is the sale of Badig Philippe Calibre uh, 89 um, in Geneva, at Sotheby's in Geneva. And this watch has been sold several times, really, um, and, uh, and the last time it sold for just over a million, uh, five million dollars. Um, but now, um, uh, and now it's up for sale again, and uh, people are starting to wonder how, it's, how the sale is going to go, whether it'll beat the $24 million record um, held by, uh, by, by another pocket watch. And this watch is, is certainly an interesting, um, uh, interesting piece, and was for many years, 26 years in fact, from uh, 1989 um, through to the release of uh, the Vacheron Constantin, which, uh, which superseded it was the most complicated um, uh, portable uh, pocket watch in the world, with, uh, with 33 complications. Um, of course, the, the Vacheron Constant that superseded it had, had 57, which is quite an increase, but, um, uh, but nonetheless, this, this uh, due to the amount of time it was out for, um, and the amount of time it held the record, uh, certainly did gain a great deal of popularity. And this celebrated the 150th anniversary of Patek Philippe as a brand, and was released in four examples, um, notably a, a yellow gold, the one you see here, which is the one for sale, a white gold, a platinum, and a rose gold. And, uh, and of course, these watches um, were, were immensely expensive when they, when they were originally released, around the $6 million um, point. Um, but nonetheless, they're, um, they're still incredible pieces of technology with, um, with, with an unbelievably complex um, arrangement with everything from moon phases to the equation of time um, to celestial charts. Um, so... So really, these are bafflingly complex watches, um, with a, a, a very typically Patek Philippe style, that very classic and uh, um, classic but uh, rather uh, overdone aesthetic that they 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 um, they often take. Now the next watch on this list is a rather interesting one, one which I think could be an extremely clever choice from Longines, and this is a new VHP, and that's a, a very high precision uh, wristwatch. It's a quartz watch from their their brand and really does follow in the footsteps of certain legendary watches that were made by them in the late 60s and 80s. Now, Longines do actually have quite a rich history in terms of quartz watches, um, which, uh, which originated in 1969 with the release of, um, of really what could be argued as being the first mass-produced quartz watch, and possibly even beating Seiko to that, uh, that award. So they do have a, a rich history in this aspect. Also, they did produce um, one of the first thermocompensated watches, their original VHP in 1984. And, uh, and this new watch, I think, does really play to, um, to the history in that it shares that name of VHP and also does have a, uh, a movement which is uh, quartz but is actually accurate to five seconds a year, making it uh, the most accurate quartz currently made. 
Now this watch is very squarely aimed at the new uh, new market in which uh, smartwatches play a large part. So this was very much their response by making a watch which is uh, which is uh, immensely accurate um, with a quartz movement rather than a mechanical affair. And I think this is a wise choice that Longines didn't step into trying to make a, a, a um, smartwatch, but rather stuck to what they knew. Now the watch comes in a three-hand version and then a chronograph version. And the chronograph version is available in a 42 and a 44mm size, whereas the three-hand is available in 41 and 43mm versions, meaning that you do have a certain variation in terms of the sizing of this watch. Though I would have liked to see a smaller option, I do think it's nice that they offer two sizes. Now various dial versions are available, notably uh, white um, patterned dials, also a blue, very heavily textured dial, and then black carbon fibre style dials, which I personally am not too keen on, but I find the blues and the whites to be very retro and, and quite attractive. Now we don't yet know the price of these watches, but what they will be fitted with is, is the GPD uh, shock resistance technology, which means the hands will return to their original position if the watch is dropped, and this uh, moves the hands at all. They will return to the position they were at previously to, to retain accuracy. This shock resistance in conjunction with the loom and the, the crown guards mean that I think this watch may become a, a popular watch among people who want a, um, uh, an, an affordable but, um, but very practical Swiss-made watch. And also with Longines heritage, I do think this is fitting. So I must say I, I think this should be an interesting watch to see and I imagine will be released fully at Baselworld. Before I conclude this video, I'd like to talk about the, the update of a watch which was very much liked in the watch world. And this is from a, a micro brand which is one of my favourites really, it's Halios. And they're a, a brand which has produced a great deal of very impressive dive watches um, over the years, and one of their most popular models, if not their most popular model, was the Puck. And this was a thousand metre circular 48mm diver, which I think really captured the, um, the, the, the minds of many dive watch lovers and enthusiasts. With its very, very no-nonsense dial and, and very legible hands, in addition to that um, that very nicely finished aluminium captive bezel. This watch really did capture the hearts and minds of dive watch lovers, and, and we've been waiting a replacement for a while now, which was announced a while back, but it should soon be available, so I, I'd like to talk about it. Where the original watch looked very good, this watch I believe looks absolutely tremendous. And this is the Halios um, uh, Puck 2, and it features a simplified dial with a triangle at 12 o'clock, and then circular indices all the way around, apart from one at... Um, at 6 o'clock, where a small circular indice has been placed under the date, which again keeps that symmetrical look. Now the case shape has been retained in that 48mm diameter, but water resistance has been, has been halved to 500 meters. And uh, I say halved, but frankly the, um, the, the amount of people who are going to use this watch at that depth um, is very small anyway, and it's also lost the helium escape valve of the original. But frankly, I, I don't feel that this watch um, uh, really requires it, to be honest, where, where, where so few people use it. What this watch has gained, though, is a sapphire bezel, which I, I adore. I love the fact that you have that, that depth from the top of the sapphire to the insert underneath. It's also much more scratch-resistant than the original aluminium. That blue uh, two-level dial is also a, a beautiful touch and does separate the dial up very nicely. The, 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 the hands of this watch have also been, um, uh, been rendered less, uh, less flared, and loom is now on the second hand, thus improving the functionality of the watch. The watch ships on a, uh, a, a metal bracelet, which is again just as uh, good a quality as the rest of the watch. But what is nice is it does have 24mm lugs underneath the watch, meaning that you can fit a 24mm strap. The reason why this watch caught my attention though is the fact that it is only $675 with a Miyota 9015, which I think is exceptional value for this 500m diver with fantastic features. Therefore, I think this watch will become a, a very popular release when it's released finally in April um, to the consumer, so I really am looking forward to seeing that. Anyway, I'll conclude the video here, but thank you very much for watching, and do please like, share, and subscribe to help the channel and see more content. Um, and do please leave your comments down below as to what you think of the models in this video. So thank you very much for watching, this is Arm on the Watch Guy, over and out.